Numbers USA is basically the organization that legislative correspondents and staff assistants love to hate. Our entire purpose is to connect your constituents with you. So we provide Americans, we have uh, just over two million activists on our membership list. Um, we provide them with information about what's going on up here on immigration and educational information from the Center for Immigration Studies primarily. Um, and then we ask them to let you all know how they feel about immigration policy, what they want you to do when bills come to the floor. So you will, if you're not familiar with Numbers USA, you will soon be because you will be seeing faxes, emails, phone calls coming through about whenever immigration is coming up and when immigration's not coming up. We still keep people uh, contacting you because you know, that's what our system of government is about. Um, so basically, we, as Mark said, we grade each member of Congress based on immigration bill co-sponsorships, sponsorships, and then votes. So we try to grade every vote that impacts the numbers of immigrants, legal or illegal. If it increases immigration, it gets bad grades. If it decreases immigration or increases enforcement, it gets good grades. Um, and we send those grade cards out to your constituents. So they know, and there are uh, lots of examples where uh, someone in a town hall meeting waved around a Numbers USA grade card page and said, why do you have a C? Um, so be ready to look at those grades um, as votes progress, as bills are introduced. Um, just so that you can make sure that your boss is aware of what may come at him or her. Um, there's nothing worse than surprising a member of Congress, as you all know. Um, we also send out scoring notices. So if there's a bill coming up, like there is on the DHS spending bill, we will let you know what we hope that you will do. Um, and you should, in fact, hopefully have a scoring notice on the two amendments, the two defund amendments that are coming up on the DHS bill in your inboxes already. Um, those were, I hope, sent out this morning. And this is, you know, we want to give you fair notice on how we're going to grade any particular immigration bill. Um, so we are, in fact, going to score the votes on the Blackburn Amendment that defunds DACA and the Adderholt Mulvaney Barletta Amendment that defunds the Morton prosecutorial discretion memos and the November 20th executive amnesty actions. Um, you know, Congressman Brooks is right that we have a uh, not particularly visible path to success on this, but it's very important that you actually pass these two amendments. And the reason is that you know, as he mentioned, there he wants to do. He wants the House of Representatives to file a lawsuit. Well, Numbers USA has already funded a lawsuit by a group of ICE agents that was filed right after DACA was first implemented in 2012, and this has been working its way through the courts. Um, about half of the states in this country have filed a lawsuit against the the administration for the November 20th illegal actions. If Congress turns around and funds unconstitutional acts, you can't then go into a court of law and say it's unconstitutional. Well, yeah, I mean, I know we funded it, but we believe it's unconstitutional. That is, is essentially you know, the idea of dirty hands. You don't have clean hands if you have actually participated in an illegal act. By funding it, you're participating in it. So this is a really critical thing, and it's not just a principle, but as you've heard from everybody today, this is about American workers. This is critical. And you know, you all will be getting calls and faxes and emails from your constituents who are looking at immigration as any other public policy. They want an immigration policy that is set in the national interest. What's best for Americans? You know, it doesn't matter to them what's best for Mexico or what's best for India or what's best for any other country in the world. 
You know, we're a generous and, and compassionate people, but we care about our families first. So they want to know how immigration policy is going to help or at least not hurt them. So they want to know why they're sitting for hours and hours in an emergency room when their child is sick because there are too many people who are, are uninsured or are using the emergency room as a doctor. They want to know why their children are in a public school where nobody speaks English. They want to know why their family is surrounded by gang violence. They want to know why they're paying higher taxes, making lower wages, and getting fewer services because our welfare costs have exploded. These are the questions that Americans want answered, and these all are massively impacted by immigration policy both legal and illegal. You all will have meetings galore with special interest groups, with the Chamber of Commerce, with Zuckerberg, with agricultural groups. All of these people have a point of view and they have a, a valid interest. I mean, if you're an employer and you, you, know, you clearly want the cheapest labor you can get, there's nothing wrong with that. But you as legislative assistance, you know, as policy people, you need to understand that they have an interest. That they're going to tell you what, you know, the best arguments for their case. You need to look at the facts. And I'll tell you, every one of us is more than happy if you dig for the facts, because the facts are on our side every time every single time. You know, if you look into the data that the high-tech companies provide on their, you know, their supposed shortages of high-tech workers, you will find that that's not accurate. Are there shortages in, in specific geographic areas? Perhaps. Does that mean that those companies shouldn't have to recruit Americans from, you know, if, if the shortage is in Salt Lake City, shouldn't they have to advertise the job to Americans in other places around the country so that those Americans can move and take that job rather than being unemployed and on, you know, welfare and, and unemployment and food stamps and so on? Isn't that better for the country? So those are the kinds of questions that we really, really hope that you will ask. Um, the other thing I just want to say what Jessica said about you know, the massive decrease in enforcement, this is not because ICE agents or Border Patrol agents don't want to enforce the law. ICE has the lowest morale of any federal agency in the government. And it's because of this. It's because they're not allowed to do their jobs. It's because they are releasing criminals and they know it. And they have families too that they want to protect and they can't because they're not allowed to. So let's step back from kind of the politics and let's think about what's best for America. How do we solve the problems we have here at home as they relate to immigration? Because I guarantee you, you will find the answer is not to give amnesty the answer is not to increase the number of temporary workers, and it's not to increase the number of green card holders or lawful permanent residents. It's gonna to be to decrease those, to tailor them to what America needs. So I hope you all will think about that, and um, I hope that Marguerite will actually send out our contact information to everybody who signed up on the sheet, and I'll leave it there. Thank you. <laughs>